that's why Star Trek just has, um, you know, anti-acceleration buffers. Uh, the initial dampness. That thing. Yeah, as I said, but it's fun to have something that isn't that. Nice to explore those concepts. I guess. That's why one of my favourite book series is the Three Colour Mars series. Which is a sort of realistic depiction of colonising Mars. Hmm. That's one of the better revenge Though they do, They do come up with, like, longevity medicine or whatever. Yeah. Just so that, like, the characters can still be alive by the time they've colonised Mars. <sighs> but, like, burning up stuff with lasers to increase the atmospheric pressure and stuff. Yeah. Planks. Like crashing water asteroids into it. Well, comets, I guess. Chonko ice. <clears throat> what is that? A destroyer? I think That's we're top tier. It. Oh, top tier in a fucking Chapaya. Yeah. Don't have to worry about bloody penetrating battleships. Well, suffice to say, if there are any battleships, they're on the enemy team. And fortunately, I am not doing a Samar and shooting lots of AP at destroyers. Oh, what well, they did? Yeah, that's part of the re Basically, they had bad S intel. They were like... Some guy over there is shooting at me. Hmm. A light cruiser. Oh, okay. There. There's a heavy cruiser over there. I haven't. I can't lock your light, friend. Yeah, he's just pinged off. Oh well, back to a back to AP. So at Samar, the Japanese basically had a combination of bad intel and um, bad assumptions. Ah, it's always fun in war. Well, oh, there he is. Yeah, Ocherum. No, because it's no, that's a different guy. Ah, well, just shoot where you can. Yep. When you can't fucking see them over rocks, when you're firing at boxes, it's hard to get good intel. Yep. Like the Japanese. That is a Furutaka. I see one. a. I see three cruisers moving over that direction. Oh, I think they're in a big clump. Yeah. Also, I'm down an engine. So basically, they saw a clump of, you know, half a dozen carriers and half a dozen escort ships, or a dozen escort ships. So naturally, they went, well, those are probably the new Essexes. Mm. And if those carriers were Essexes, then the escort ships, by size comparison, had Ooh, to be cruisers. Oh. There's a boat that just beached itself, and it's a bot, so you have to... Uh, of course it's a bot. Were they not Essex? No, they were escort carriers. So they were just overpenning it? Well, they were escort carriers, escorted by, at largest, Fletchers. So they were lobbing... Just having a shell pass straight through your ship and be like, oh fuck. Yeah, they were having 18 JP shells, and bigger, going straight through the DDs. Um... That's after they figured out what the range was, because they had miscalculated the range. Because naturally, you see an object that's 200 feet long that you think is 600 feet long, and you think it's, you know, two, three times yes, the distance. Yes, you think it's... yeah. So if you're aiming at the waterline, you'll probably put a couple of shells through its superstructure, and uh, nobody will have a very good day. I don't like all of these bang, bang, bang noises I'm hearing for no reason. Yeah, I think something small is, like, pinging us. Well, my secondaries are set to dual purpose. Let's see, there's a Russian cruiser in front of me. Looks like you. Uh, there's torps there. Yeah, that'll probably be from the boat or the Furutaka. Try to go wide. Um, but there's a Chapayev right there. How are your anti-Russian guns? 
Uh, Getting no, shot sorry. by Russians. Furu Taka's right there. Yeah, there's a Chapa and a Furu Taka coming around the corner, and then there's something German looking. Oh, and a boat. I think a boat support. Yeah. Got some damage on him. Well, I'll put the secondary. I'm shooting the too. Chapa here, I think. Ah, same difference. It was in my face. I needed to die. I'm gonna attack into C point. Understandable. Well, there are there's a cruiser and a destroyer in front of us. Yeah, I might as well kill the destroyer, I guess. Well, if you can kill the destroyer, I'll keep shooting at the fur attacker. Guess I've got the rapid fire guns. Hmm. Secondary's got him. Apparently. He was on 4% after my last volley, so it's to be expected. Furutaka is not dead, and it's barely hurt. But now, let's put some sap into his magazines. Well, oh, I'm not enough crew. I was attempting to lob AP into them, but... Nice. Oh, yes. Now, I you mentioned... Damage for die. Colonizing Mars and stuff. That's one of my favorite event chains in the Star Trek mod for Stellaris. Oh, is it that early? Yeah, it starts in 2151, i.e. it starts before Enterprise starts. What date was the warp flight? Uh, I think, what, as in warp one? Yeah. As in first contact? Yeah. 2058? So, a bit after that. Well, Enterprise starts 2155, I think. Oh, four attackers nearly dead. Yeah. So, well. Finished him. Yeah, I'll jump in a 206. Yeah, let me just see if I can deal with the ending on Charlie. This is where you need Kaka, because you probably actually have to to that. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not feeling so well. Seeing as I'm strafing it with my rear gun. Well, as I say, it looks not a bit hot. not doing too much damage, actually. Did it just explode? Uh, it lost five percent health or somewhere. Well, fortunately, he's presenting his rear to me now, so I have that to hit now. Hell, just die already. And this is why I don't like the crew mechanic, because a ship can be completely and utterly totaled and doesn't die. Gee, thanks. Um, there's a destroyer. Yeah, there's one right there. I need to. I know. I think the crew's mechanics probably better than it was the mechanics were before they introduced that. Eh. But that's just because it was like just explosions. 
It's still just explosions. Can I kill anything? <laughs> no, all mine. All my kills. I'll kill this guy as well. Oh, I think he went out of arc. A grozer? Yeah, bot. Bot grozer. God, reversing in a hydrofoil. I think that's a Chapayev. It's a Russian light cruiser with three turrets. Uh, Chapayev has four. Uh, okay, well, it's not a Kirov. Kirov has three. I don't think it's a Kirov. Uh, it might be. I don't think it is. It's an alternate body. It's got the two funnels like a Kirov, is why I say. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah. Can't remember. Uh, oh, that's uh, Kirov. Okay. You can tell because of the, like, narrowly I, spaced I but can't long see the guns. guns. Ah. I can, I'm just glad they're not looking at me. Well, he's almost dead, so if you want to finish him off, you're welcome to. Kill steal. Oh, oh. oh that's a torpedo. You stole my kill steal. Haha. <laughs> it's also. Like an HE-111 of high. Mm. I love when AP actually works to kill tiny things. Which makes not much sense really because, you know, again, AP would just kind of go in one end and out the other. Is that? It was an LC? Hang on, what be RC LCS? Uh, three three or something. It was a bot. Nice. I don't think he even got an assist on that. He killed him so quick. Well, that was the idea. Alright, I'm swapping back to AP because it's a heavy cruiser, but there's a bot destroyer over that direction. Never mind. Man, Groza is easy to get rid of. Oh, it's a British heavy cruiser. It's York. Ooh, that means no armor. No, but it also means all it has to do is look at me and I die. I'll try to get some shots on. Oh, I successfully shot him in the mast. As in, above the yard arm. Which I have to say is kind of impressive. Is it that guy bow on? Over there. Oh, there. Bloody gunner. I just see this Agano. Wait, Agano is pretty unarmed, isn't it? Agano is pretty much naked, yeah. I'll shoot him then. Where's the Argano? Oh. I can't see it. Uh, he's got no turrets because I'm firing at him. Okay, well... Apparently 76mm is enough. They have an inch of armor on them, if that. Oh, I can see the Brit. Um, behind you, Trick. I don't know if you can mm -hmm. see that guy, but there's a player boat. Oh, it's an S100. Yeah, and I just missed. <sighs> I wish changing ammo types was quicker on this thing, but eh, what can you do? Well, it's presently charging a Hawkins. Oh good, the Hawkins got it. Uh, oh, I think that York is interested in me. 
In what way are your turrets pointing? Oh, they look like pinpricks to me. Oh no, no, he's changing to you, I think. Yeah, because he's noticed me again. Fortunately, no, I'm popping shoot back him. to AP. I'll shoot his front turrets. It might work. Do, 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 do. Oh, I jammed my gun. I took out his B turret. Yep. Well, oh. I'm just presently power sliding. I put some damage on his A turret. He's very hurt. He just put some shells into him. Trying. Two percent. But the present. You know what? I'd be annoyed normally, but the Hawkins can have it. <laughs> yeah, Hawkins deserves it. And that's the benefit of driving a crappy ship. You get sympathy. Adagano didn't get sympathy. Oh my he god, I enemy. need five thousand damage. I got thirteen thousand damage. Oh I did eleven thousand. <laughs> It's amazing what having targets you can actually hit does. Amazing not detonating to Maria's constantly does. Hmm. Ooh, I got rudder replacement for my 206. I only got 8,000 though. Uh, rangefinder or props? Let's get props. Man, if I'd had that 500% booster active on that map match, it would have been like 40,000 research. Yep. But then, if I'd had that 500% booster active, we probably would have ended up in a match that would have been, you know, 17 battleships. Oh, I've done, done my dailies already. It was well quick. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I'm going to take a break. Okay. A bit weird after one match, but I'll make some coffee and stuff. Mm. You just want to run a match or wait? Five ten minutes or whatever. Uh, five ten minutes, I can wait. Right. On the bright side, Suzuki's crew is getting a nice workout, which means it'll be. It, it is my best Japanese crew, which means Hugo will have an easier time on it. The Royal Navy had plans to have three major fleets, at home, in the Mediterranean, and out in the Far East, and the proposed limits would not allow any of these to be maintained in any credible strength. Despite their lack of money, the French didn't like being pushed down to the third tier and having to be equal to the Italians, since after all, everyone knows cheese goes on top of pasta and cheese goes on top of pizza, not the other way around. The initial French counter-proposal would have given them a fleet slightly larger than Japan's, although with no comment about where they were going to find the money to pay for all of that. The only people who were vaguely happy with the idea were obviously the Americans, because they were the ones who proposed it, and the Italians who were mainly enjoying the look on the faces of the French delegation as they had to consider the idea of the Italians being their equals, at least at sea. And that was before you got into the actual restrictions on tonnage and armament, together with what this would mean for the various navies. And the Japanese and the Americans had both completed, or near completed, 16-inch armed ships. And for the Japanese navy, the Mutsu, built by public subscription, was of a particular concern. And for the British, this meant that the US and Japanese navies could potentially have better armed and more modern capital ships, as they had no 16-inch armed ships anywhere near completion. The G3s had barely even been started, whereas the Japanese would have a force composed entirely of 16-inch battleships, 14-inch battleships with 12 guns and 14-inch armed battlecruisers, whilst the US Navy would have 16-inch armed ships plus most of the rest of the battle line armed with 12 14-inch guns apiece, 
with the remaining ships also having 14 inch guns aside from a handful of older 12 inch armed ships. Whilst the Royal Navy would have a decent 15 inch armed battle line, a large portion would be older ships with 13 and a half inch guns. Although on the other hand there was the 42,000 ton hood sitting there well in excess of any of the proposed limits on individual capital ship displacement. The initial proposal on cruiser limitations by setting tonnage based on the same ratios was almost immediately shut down by both the UK and France, both of which had large colonial empires for which they felt a large number of cruisers were needed, well in excess of the proposed ratio limitations. Given their experiences with the U-boats, the British wanted submarines to be scrapped and banned entirely. But precisely because of the U-boats' effectiveness, everybody else disagreed. And thus began several months of negotiations, arguments, bargains and counter-proposals. With the Americans doing their best to spy on everybody else's communications home to give them some leverage and advantage at the table enjoying some particular success in keeping an eye on the Japanese delegation's communications. Early 1922 rolled around and a lot of the original proposals had either been dropped or radically rewritten, but the treaty was finally signed in February 1922 and then had to go through about a year and a half of ratification. To more fully explain what the outcome was, how it got there and who cheated on what clauses, we'll go through the treaty's primary sections and look at each of them in turn. Article 1 was basically, we all agree to this treaty, so so much for that. Articles 2 through 6, however, covered battleships as follows. Forgive the legalese, but it is how it is written. Article 2, the contracting powers may retain respectively the capital ships which are specified in Chapter 2, Part 1 on the coming into force of the present treaty, but, subject to the following provisions of this article, all other capital ships built or building of the United States, the British Empire and Japan shall be disposed of as prescribed in Chapter 2, Part 2. In addition to the capital ships specified in Chapter 2, Part 1, the United States may complete or retain two ships of the West Virginia class, now under construction, that's what we would consider to be the Colorado class, on completion of these two ships, the North Dakota and Delaware shall be disposed of as prescribed in Chapter 2, Part 2. The British Empire may, in accordance with the replacement table in Chapter 2, Part 3, construct two new capital ships not exceeding 35,000 tonnes or 35,560 metric tonnes, standard displacement each. On the completion of the, the said two ships, the Thunderer, King George V, Ajax and Centurion shall be disposed of as prescribed in Chapter 2. Two, part 2. Article 3. Subject to the provisions of Article 2, the contracting powers shall abandon their respective capital ship building programs and no new capital ship shall be constructed or acquired by any of the contracting powers except replacement tonnage, which may be constructed or acquired as specified <laughs> in Chapter 2, Part 3. Have you got any idea what this razor gold thing is? Um, it'll so be like some sort it's premium currency for Razor, I'd imagine. I mean, I've got a Razor mouse, but... Yeah, so you know what Razor is, and you know how much they're that chintzy gamerite crab. Oh my god, the build quality is terrible. Yeah, and the price is but, terrible well, as well. Well, I say that, I mean, I've had it, like, going on ten years or something. Yeah. It's just well, my, my it standards are quite high when it comes to build quality. Well... I quite like my little Logitech mouse that is the second of the pattern that I've been using. Um, Logitech do sound like they've got better builds, but well, do they even do like a 19 button mouse? Uh, probably. I mean, this one is 2, 4, 6, 8, plus the mouse wheel. Um, but it was also 30 quid, you know? <laughs> <laughs> And it fits my hand reasonably well, which is good, because I've got big hands. I just like having a 12-button thumb pad. I don't like the thumb pads, because I have, like, short, fat thumbs. <laughs> yeah. Mice are, like, totally personal preference, aren't they? Yeah. Well, it's ergonomics. And functionality.
But yeah, if you want to, whenever you want to queue, because I've just been sitting here listening to the Washington Naval Treaty. <laughs> Which, naturally, I'm going to have to edit out, because <laughs> I'm not plagiarizing Dragon Neville. That would be rude. You there? Got chucked out the queue. Hello? back. <sighs> Hello? Hello? Oh, I have a five, I have 50 second, or five second ping. Great. Ships which are replaced in accordance with Chapter 2, Part 3 shall be disposed of as prescribed in Part 2 of that chapter. Article 4. The total capital ship replacement tonnage for each of the contracting powers shall not exceed in standard displacement for the United States 525,000 tonnes, for the British Empire 525,000 tonnes, for France 175,000 tonnes, for Italy 175,000 tonnes, and for Japan 315,000 tons. Article 5. No capital ship exceeding 35,000 tons standard displacement shall be acquired by or constructed by, for, or within the jurisdiction of any of the contracting powers. And Article 6. No capital ship of any of the contracting powers shall carry a gun with a calibre in excess of 16 inches, 406 millimetres. The tables that they mention in Chapter 2 gave the French and Italians early replacement options in the late 1920s to compensate for their not being able to build new capital ships armed with 15 or 16 inch weapons. Mutsu was preserved and the Americans got to keep Colorado and West Virginia in addition to Maryland which had just about completed before the start of the treaty negotiations. This ratio of 16 inch armed ships neatly mirrored the treaty, dis treaty displacement ratios. The British had been able to get on the playing field with two of their own new 16-inch vessels, and these would become the Nelsons. The reason for two rather than three, like the US Navy, was twofold. 
The Colorados were just over 32,000 tons new, whereas the new British ships would be 35,000 tons and obviously to a slightly more modern design. Plus the unspoken understanding of not demanding the scrapping of the hilariously over-the-limit hood, which was silently standing in as the third big British capital ship. Additionally, there was a clause that allowed France and Italy to upgun their existing ships to 16-inch if they could manage it. Hello. But Hello. Yo. Yo. Also, I just looked at my network settings and <laughs> I've used 50, I've, I've used one and a half terabytes in the last month um, <laughs> of internet. <laughs> Glad you don't have limits. I hope I don't have limits. So that might explain some things if there are. Um, anyway, ready and oh boy. Yeah. Uh, hang on, I'm just informing someone about something. Okay. In a YouTube comment. <laughs> this was never taken up. So what you're saying is you're wasting your effort. And this therefore had been a relatively no, easy one to negotiate. No, because it's like a smaller the channel with like 14 ratio, comments on but it, thanks so to American intelligence efforts, they knew uh. the Japanese government would accept it. Just. As there was only one class of vessels thus affected, the Nelsons, we've got to look and see if they had any quirks of design that might constitute a cheat. In this, there technically was, although unlike others that we'll see later, this was actually baked into the rules. Listen to a podcast and they say Discworld adaptations, like good ones, are quite thin on the ground. So is the, saying, have so you is seen Discworld, Troll Bridge? Hmm? So is the Discworld itself, isn't it? Being Troll, a the, flat disc. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. No, I was just there. Uh, Troll Bridge was really well done. Good. Following around Cohen the Barbarian, who's an octogenarian barbarian. <laughs> of course. Everyone's like, oh, I, you're, you can't be him. He's like s massive and seven foot tall. My granddad used to tell me, so. oh. Oh, I get it. Yeah. Who the fuck is Gina Corona? Oh, I don't know. Why do I even look at news? Hmm? Someone leaving Lucasfilm. Ugh. Oh, yeah. Gina. Um, she's the big muscle lady. Oh, she was alright. Yeah. Basically, What's she's she done. She's not left wing enough for Disney. <sighs> so the people on Twitter basically went mad because she's not. Oh, Twitter. Uh, left wing, so they fired her. Hang on. I'm gonna need something more than isn't left wing. Did she actually I'm going say anything with controversial? Probably voted against Biden. <laughs> I doubt that. It's gotta be. It's gotta be something like actionable. Doubt it. Like simply a political preference is not probably. I mean, that's, that's Hollywood. Yeah. And political views are not protected against discrimination laws, as far as I'm aware. And besides, Disney happens to have uh, literal buckets full of money for lawyers. Disney's the most fake left-wing thing I've ever seen. Welcome to the left wing. <laughs> Wait, are you recording? Yep. This then is I'll going not go out. on a big political tirade. I'd rather not, yes. <laughs> Click on a random article. Oh, fuck off, cookies. Go on a different random article. Why am I even looking at this? <laughs> I 
Uh. <laughs> I really should get an extension just to tell all the cookie stuff to fuck off. It's like, I don't want your cookies. Mm. Glad they at least fucking tell you about it now. Yeah, because they're obliged to. The best ones are the American sites that go, oh, we're working on our, like, bringing our product to Europe, and then that's like four years later, they stop that shit. It's like, just so you can't be asked to fulfill legal requirements and go. Oh. Mm. Bloody hell. You've got so many gigabytes, it looks like a date. I did say it was one and a half terabytes. What's your upload download? Uh, nowhere near what I'd like it to be, but that's BT for you, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I remember back in the day, I used to have. Oh, I think it was BT. Maybe it was someone else, but uh, they were like, "We have no limits on our like." Downloads and limits amounts. Yeah. yeah, they did, however, have a fair use clause, which meant they could just cut you off. Yeah, which they did, and then we found one without a fair use clause, and we're happier. Let's do the Google speed test at the moment. It's this. Oh, I never trust those things. They whitelist them. It's also slow. Er. Because I'm supposed to be getting 100 megabits download at least, and I'm on 72 according to that. Okay, oh, oh, are you going to torp at the start? Best torp map. Uh, I should probably consider that, yeah. Hopefully there's not just a million and one battleships. Just uh, do it like from a point then to the right in a spread, and you'll usually catch some people. Well, I usually go from the right to a point in a spread. Hmm, it's best to start your pointer on a, because that's like the furthest left you can go. I Just suppose. make sure you don't hit that little sandbar. Let us see what we've got. And make like. it quite narrow as well. Well, they have more people than we do. But the fact that the bots are in Groza's, um Oh, is sap going to be good enough, or do I need to change? The fact that the bots are in Grozas and not Chapayevs uh, tells me that chances are this is a low tier match. Firing at that Furutaka. Okay, well I've dumped a spread. I don't expect Torbs to be too effective on this one because yeah, there's not like a horde of battleships, is there? Yeah. But I have to say, with how big and slow they are, we may as well just call them cattle ships. Because they're big. there'd be some Liberty ships that transported cattle. <laughs> True. You know, that's a terrible waste. Like, efficiency-wise, cattle's like one of the worst. Mm. Actually, no, I guess full-grown cattle are fine. It's like getting them to full-grown that's the inefficient bit. <laughs> like, the amount of water it takes to make, a, like, cattle as opposed to, like, equal calories in, like, vegetables or whatever. Is he, he's fucking stopped. That's why I'm missing it. My fiance made the best satay chicken last night. Mm. And uh, steamed bao buns. Nice. It's like, ooh, Chinese New Year. Let's have Chinese food. Fair enough. Well, nearly Chinese New Year. It's like today, tomorrow? I don't know. I can't even remember. I have a bao recipe. buns are nice. I, ha I have a recipe for some Japanese porridge if you're interested in that. Japanese porridge. Yeah. What what's the ingredient like the main ingredient? Water. 
What's the second main ingredient? Rice. Right, so it's a rice porridge. Yeah. So I'm not sure if I've ever had it's, rice it's, porridge. It's a pint of water to a cup, or to half a cup of rice. Mm. <laughs> or is it like rice or like rice flour? Rice. Oh, so it is, it's basically rice pudding then. It, no, the ingredients are water, rice, salt. Also, I've lost my forward magazine. Ah, you don't need that. Read something else. Well, that reminds me, first time I played a game with magazines in it, I was very confused. It's like, why are you picking up all these magazines? I was like 10 or something. Well, I can see my torps crossing the A point now. I mean, there's some ships out there. You might hit one of them. No, I know. Um, that destroyer there, that's cutting across uh, Max Geria. Looks like he might end mm -hmm. up on an intercept with one of my torps, but... I'm just trying to kill this Urutaka while heading to A point. Shooting planes? Uh, no, I think it's just a high arc shot. Yeah, my forward magazine's down. But at least now they actually show the reduction in numbers in your shells. They've always done that. It's just a bit weird sometimes. And doesn't like, I work. think if it only kills the charges, it doesn't count the numbers or some weirdness. Because I've had both. Come on, kill this fucking Furutaku, he's on 13%. Well, I'm, I'm shooting at the myself, Chapayev. Yeah, I'm, I really want to shoot that Chapayev. Oh, there you go, 6%, I'll change target. I really want to kill this Chapayev. He's quite close. Also quite on fire and doing quite an annoyingly good job at dodging all the torpedoes. Yeah. Well, you got the Furu. Yep. Get Furu to play Japan, then you can have the Furu Furu. Hmm. Well, wait until they add a Takal class, because then you can have Furu's Takal. Oh, I do like the Takal. I guess, where's the Takao come? It is it as good as a Megami or is it Megami is the successor. So it's better than like a 6 inch Megami, but not as good as a 8 inch. Well, the 8 inch Megamis have better angles. Plus the Takao's oh, have got Oh, is it got high, low, high, low turrets? Yeah. It's that a guy might get torped for shooting some more. <laughs> I booped the snoot. Got a Freccia. Yeah, I slapped a Freccia in the face with 8 inch HE because. lol. Yeah. I'm sorry, did you like that boat? I didn't. No, I. the. Your hard work. Me? Yeah. See, I don't like wretches. Hey! Oh, that. oh, nice. It's like a Kirov or something murdering me. Okay, now I've got to focus my efforts on this damned river Oh, Russian there's a little boat, boat right next to you. Yeah, I know. It's a bot. And uh, it successfully killed me. Well, that's annoying. Yeah, I know. Might have to go boat so we don't lose. 
get killed by a damned PT boat at the same rate you get killed by a damned battleship. Oh, I think I killed the Kirov, he's on 9%. Oh well, Shima surprise. Yeah, that'd be good for getting in the cap. It's not a bot. God damn, someone smokes me now, I can't see shit. There appears to be a plane. Very low. Yeah, uh, there appears to have been a plane. Also, it was a G55. Did they even get good bombs? No, it was a G55S. That's the premium one, I think. Yeah. And if it's not the premium, it's expensive. Though I think it is the premium because pre dumb premium Italian plane plus Freccia. Oh, a 1924, ouch. Well... He picked a fight. I think we've lost this anyway. Not necessarily. We have a guy almost on Charlie. Is the guy or is it a bot? Um, It's a bot. Yeah, it might decap then. And I'm two miles from... Bravo. So the only way I'm going. The other, oh the only God! Way. Oh, there's a uh, a wild PR50 appears. Oh, oh not to worry. Um, actually, never mind. There's three torps just going straight past him. Also, there's a bunch of torps right there. Uh, enemy torps. Um, I just love it when you have HE loaded. Oh wait, I think I've got SAP loaded. Never mind. I'm a Japanese destroyer. I don't know any other feeling. <laughs> I'm just imagining that bit from Fight Club. Oh, I wish I had bloody engine upgrades or something. Making best speed to B point. Well, we have a big guy on B point. Like, very nearly. Uh, there's a Sparviero coming for you, Trick. Sparviero? Yeah. You know oh, how I, I mentioned him. that there's an Italian with more money than sense? Well, yeah, don't worry. He's, he's like two kilometers away from me. He's fucked. Yeah, I'm aware. My turret's turn. Oh. If I hadn't missed that he last salvo. He was gonna salvo. cap A point, wouldn't he? Probably. Um, there's a destroyer in front of me. It's Russian. Also, contact my left. This. Someone's shooting me from C point. Yeah. Oh no, again. I'm not enough crude. Oh, terrible. I'll go in at 206. Eh. I guess I have to shoot the thing from Charlie, which is a Type 1936. Most of the zones are under control. It's a PR7U. Oh no, that's a different thing. Yeah, that's. Ow. Oh, you're quite close to B, I didn't realize you got that close. Yeah, I I did say I was two miles from it earlier, and, you know, she must surprise coming for you. Yeah, I am well aware. Should I try to radar him? Well, it's dead. Is it dead enough, though? Oh, Probably not, because I hear a bomb. I hear many bombs. Oh, there was a second plane. Right. Okay. Um, 
I wish this thing had VT fuses. I should take Suzuya. Suzuya. Huh. There's a cure of. Come on, guns, point where I want you. Or, you know, just ignore it and point wherever the hell you want. This Kirov has a force field. My guns don't want to point at it. Every time I point Kill my guns... Kill two destroyers. That's good. I would be hitting this Kirov, but my guns keep going either side of it when I point at it. What, the way it, where you'd point it drifts? Where I point straight at the target and the reticle jumps five degrees either side whenever yeah, I Yeah, I trigger. don't think... I think that's just a UI error. I think your guns are still correct. Well, considering that they went from pointing ahead of it to behind it to finally on target now that the reticle stopped jumping around, um, I don't think that's the case. I know, I've had that bug but still hit stuff before. It's weird. That's called luck. Anyway, the enemy team is mostly dead, so if we just keep finishing them off. Also, that one bozo with all the W's in his name spawned three Italian premiums, died in three Italian premiums, and left. It's only this to say his wallet's gonna hurt. Spawn. What? I was wondering if he spawned a third ship. No. Two boats and a plane. Why, why am I shooting seven kilometers away? I'm never gonna hit him. Oh, I hit him. He's on three percent. You know this Kirov I keep complaining about. Yeah, that's what I'm shooting at. Oh, never mind. Well, it was pretty close, but I think we got it. Well, we've got it if only because they're out of men. <laughs> like... Yeah. Oh yeah, they've got rapid bleed now. Isn't it so fun when battleships aren't here? Hmm. Well, that's a good one to end that recording.